Hey guys, welcome to another video. First of all, I made a super tall camera plate adapter thing. I was sick of having to take things apart to be able to switch batteries or SD cards, so I thought I'd share. It's also more rigid now because it attaches to this speed booster camera lens adapter I'm using. I thought it came out pretty good, so I thought I'd share. Let's make another prototype. On my last video, I made this aluminum prototype. But after spending some time with it, there are some things I'd like to change. I wasn't happy with how the handle tapers came out. To me, it looks like the handles are supposed to be straight. There's hardly any angle to them. But they got messed up or something, and there's a gap in the middle. And so I'm just not happy with that look. So I decided to just go ahead and make full-on butterfly knife handle tapers and then punch out a second square hole. I'm hoping the pin having less contact in the hole won't be a problem. I felt like the ballast scissors could also be just a little bit thinner. They probably won't be the same thickness as a regular butterfly knife, but I thought I'd just try to go a little thinner, which has some difficulty involved because the pins have to fit almost like a key and a lock in two different positions and have everything not interfere with each other. So it took a bit of work. I also added a nice curve to the handles. I think the main feature missing from the prototypes is the button clicking up and down. It can either just fall back and forth due to gravity or get stuck due to manufacturing errors. I spent some time in Fusion trying to come up with the clicking mechanism. One thing I'm going to try is a ball and detent mechanism. My butterfly knife has these little bumps that make kind of a blade guard. So I added these to the design so that it gives me room for a ball, spring, and set screw. But I'm going to have to rotate the diamond holes back in the square orientation that way I can put the detents on the faces of the pins instead of the corners. But I have other ideas that I want to experiment with too. For now I'm just going to work on making a prototype to test mostly the taper change I've made. Because I changed the thickness of everything, I need to make new pins. I started by turning the round features of the pins on the lathe. This time I didn't want to drill all the way through the pins. My plan was to make a few without holes and then drill blind holes in both sides of the part. I could do this quickly if I use a collet stop to make sure the pins are always in the same position. <sighs> Unfortunately the stop hits the back of the inside of the collet before it can reach such a short part. I turned down the stop so it could reach inside the hole slightly. Now the pin can be inside the collet and hit the stop without falling inside. Next I set up a drill chuck on the carriage. This will make it easier to use a dial indicator to drill to the correct depth. Plus I can move it in and out faster. But now it takes more time to set up because it's not already aligned like the tailstock. <sighs> I forgot this drill chuck can't close small enough for the drill I need to use. Sometimes it's best to just take a little break when things aren't going how you want, so let's work on something else for now. In my last video, I used the super glue method to make some parts quickly. This time I want to mess around with some more fixture ideas so I can make better parts that are more complex, and then it'll be easier to try button mechanisms or 
different materials. After I came up with a design for a fixture for the blades, I started by squaring up some stock. I decided to try making a little corner cutout for the XYZ0 based on Pearson work holding. But I'm not sure if I like it, so on my other stuff I just went to uh, drilling a round hole. That way I feel like I don't have to worry as much about things like the probe being off center or tool wear cutting the corner off position or something. I don't know. I made a lot of holes so that if I change something, I can still hold the part. I used a 632 tap, which I feel like is a little less common because I used 8th inch dowel pins and 8th inch is the drill size for a 632 form tap. The first step for making a blade is to face the stock to thickness. Then I can machine internal features on the stock. I drilled out the corners of the squares because Fusion seems to have difficulty going into a tiny corner. I can then pin the blade in place and machine the outside. I need a way to hold down the tip of the blade, so I added a tab. This time I machined the bevel on the blade. After machining the outside of the part, I can add a clamp I made and remove the screw in that tab, after which the tab can then be machined away. I also made it so the fixture can be turned on its side so I can drill holes in the side of the blades for when I want to work on the detent mechanism. But I kind of screwed it up, but that's okay. I'm not going to mess with anything with the holes quite yet. I made a fixture for the handles in the last video, but I think I can do better. In the last video, my fixture relied on the outside shape of the part in order to locate it. But now that I've added these dynamic curvy shapes to the handles, there's a lot less material to hold on to. I considered doing a fixture that followed the shape of the blades too. The advantage of this is you don't have to screw in so many screws to switch parts. You could just have a simple clamp or some kind of Mighty Byte fixturing part. The disadvantage is that it's more complex to get correct. And so I decided to just go with drilling a bunch of holes in a plate, which is simpler. And then when I'm not using the outside of the part for the fixture, it means if I want to change the outside of the part, I have more freedom to do so. I have these screw holes that I could screw down into to hold the material, but the screws might get hit when I'm surfacing the curve into the handle. So I decided to try a technique that I've seen knife makers use. I added some threaded holes on the inside of the handle. Now I can screw the handle onto the fixture from the bottom. I can position the handle accurately by using dowel pins in the holes that are for the threaded pins that hold the scissors together. The first step in making the handles is to 
face the part and drill some holes. The only problem is I have to take the fixture out of the vise in order to put the handles on each time. So I used a torque wrench to try to be consistent. But now I can work on the entire outside of the part. I tried messing with different surfacing step overs and feeds, but I'm curious about how fast you can go because if it looks rough but then I tumble it or polish it or scotch bright it later and it still looks good, then I don't have to go super slow and I can make parts faster. All right, let's finish up the pins. I decided to try this edge technology chuck. It kind of free floats and just is held by these two bolts that let you set it up quickly. I had to mess with it a bit, but it worked okay. And so I was able to drill and tap all the pins pretty quickly. I followed a similar technique for the button that I did for the handles. Except this time I have to use much more extra material for the dowel pins and I don't screw up from the bottom. This time, after facing the stock and drilling some holes, I can also machine the center divot. Then I can pin it in place, screw it down, remove the pins, and machine away the excess. And this time I made uh, handle spacers too, which I had skipped last time. And it's the same thing, face the stock, drill some holes, pin in place, screw it down and machine away the excess. So here's the finished prototype, another big improvement I feel. There's still some play, but everything feels so much smoother, and it also looks more professional I feel like. The handle and spacer bits are a little misaligned, and that probably is due to having to take the fixture in and out of the vise, so probably going to need to do a fixture fixture for the handle fixture or something. Maybe I have to do a similar thing for drilling holes in the side of uh, the blades. Next I'll probably try to make one out of steel and I think that'll make it easier to figure out what I can get away with when making a button mechanism that clicks up and down. Until then, see ya.